Arizona, and hello, America. One more round of applause for Marco. Thank you, my friend. Also, I've got to say, it's great to be in Mesa, and uh, the country has seen what courage looked like. Uh, Mayor Giles, thank you for putting country above party. Thank you. And thank you, Arizona, for giving us Mark Kelly. He's a national treasure. We appreciate him. Add Ruben Gallega to that, too, now. Get that done. And a point of personal privilege, not only an incredible governor, but one of my best friends, Katie Hobbs. Thank you for that. And we all know this gets done on the local level. You've got some incredible state legislators here today. You've got Lorraine Austin here. <laughs> Seth Blattman's here. <laughs> Senator Eva Birch. These folks are out knocking doors, phone calling, doing the work. They're all running in tight races. Send them back to get the work done. Look, <laughs> Vice President said this. We're the underdogs in this race. We know it, but we're seeing huge crowds all across the country, whether it's 109 degrees heat out here or whether it's on farms out in Pennsylvania. Folks are showing up. You know why they're showing up. They know that our politics can be better, and Kamala Harris has brought back the joy and the optimism to this. <laughs> And there is nobody more ready to do this job from her day as a prosecutor to a county attorney to the, to the uh, attorney general of the largest state in the country to a United States senator to our vice president. She's gone to work every day fighting for you and your families. Now, I love this when she said this. She's taken on the predators. She's taken on the fraudsters. She's taken down the career criminals. She stood up to powerful, greedy corporate interests. And I think about this. She is perfectly prepared to take on that debate stage tonight. Look, no one is naive. Donald Trump has debated seven times in a general election. He waved the white flags. His handlers will be the ones making the save. So she understands clearly that she's an underdog in this situation. But you know what? You know what? The leadership and the contrast between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris could not be greater. We understand, we understand clearly that we've got the best fighter on our side in Kamala Harris. So on that debate stage tonight, when she holds him accountable, he's going to have to answer for the absolute train wreck, which was his presidency. <laughs> Folks, you're in this room because you know it. We can't take four more years of this guy. Make no mistake. If he goes back, it'll be worse. And I'll have to tell you, you've heard it. I said it, whether it's a playbook when you're a coach or as a to-do list, their to-do list is Project 2025. They're absolutely clear what he's going to do. He's going to cut taxes for the rich again while screwing the middle class. He's going to make sure that he does nothing to make groceries less expensive because he's going to impose a national sales tax as his ridiculous tariffs. He is going to clear out the experts in government that are ones, whether they are fighting forest fires or whether they are doing the epidemiology around uh, pandemics. Those are the folks he'll clear out, put his loyalists in instead. And every one of you in here knows, every one of you knows, no matter what he says, he will ban abortion with or without Congress. He is the one who put those justices in. He may try and change from hour to hour, but guess what? Women don't trust him. Women don't trust him. So look, Republicans used to talk about it, and you know it out here because you had them. Republicans that contributed great to this country like John McCain, and you know when they talk, when they talk small government, they really meant it. These guys, it means small enough to fit in your doctor's office, small enough to be in your school library, small enough to be in your bedroom. So I'll tell you, I know it's true in Arizona because it's true in Minnesota. When we make choices, we want to make the personal choices ourselves. That's what freedom means. Who we marry, who we love, when we have a family. We'll make the choices. 
And if our neighbors make a different choice, that's up to them. We may not agree with it, but you all live, I know you do, like Minnesotans do, by the golden rule. Mind your own damn business and we'll get along better. We'll get along better. No one asked, no one asked for their agenda to take control over our bodies. When Vice President Harris and I talk about freedom, we mean you make the choices about your health care. When we talk about education as a ticket to the middle class, not crippling debt. And yeah, we mean the freedom to send your kids to school without being shot dead in school. The heartbreak of two students and two teachers dead in Georgia brought it right back to us last week. Look, I'm a teacher and many of you know that. Going back to school is a joyous time. It should be a time of excitement, of hope. But now for those folks and for too many of our children, it's a time of terror. And I say this, I know guns. I'm a veteran and I'm a hunter. But I will not allow them to make this about the Second Amendment when our first responsibility is to the safety of our children. And I quote from these guys. Donald Trump said people traumatized by mass shootings just need to get over it. And when J.D. Vance was a few miles down the road last week, he said massacres are like, like this one are a fact of life. You know what's a fact of life? The sky is blue. That's a fact of life. You want to know another fact of life? Trump got his ass kicked in the 2020 election. He's going to do it again. He's going to do it again. This stuff happens nowhere else in the world. These guys do not believe in America. They do not believe in our exceptionalism. They do not trust the American public. They tell us we have to accept this, even though it doesn't happen anywhere else. But I'll tell you what, we're not going to roll over. This is America, for God's sakes, and we can fix this epidemic of shootings. We can do it if we have Kamala Harris in the White House. Look, we'll give you something to vote for. You're going to see a contrast here in about three minutes. You're going to see somebody lay out an agenda for the middle class. Opportunity to start businesses, opportunity to own a home, opportunity to good education, opportunity to get health care and make your own decisions, opportunity to make sure you can buy groceries without being squeezed out, opportunity to buy prescription drugs by taking on the folks who are jacking up the prices. They want to blame everything on immigrants. They don't want to talk about Wall Street. They don't want to talk about the price gougers. And they don't want to talk about the grifters like the two of them are. So what we all know, <laughs> Kamala Harris will cut the red tape. She'll put in an agenda that puts you first. And no matter who you are, or where you live, you make the choices about your life, not Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. <laughs> so look, big part of this is who you fight for. She wakes up every morning fighting for you. Those guys wake up thinking about themselves. It's as simple as that. So here's the deal. Get out, talk to folks. We have got 56 days to make a difference for generations in this country. We've got 56 days to make sure that we have an agenda that puts people first rather than billionaires. So think about it. When do you get a chance for 56 days to change things? Keep your foot on the gas, stay off the damn brake, don't sleep for the next 56 days. Knock the doors and let's watch her do her work and let's go do ours. Let's go, Arizona. So with the, the stakes so high, the presidential debate just moments away, we, we have the entire news division keeping an eye on everything. Uh, we are gonna be fact checking on our live blog. It's all gonna be happening right here, the debate now just 10 seconds away, and we will be back with our post-game show as soon as it's over. We are gonna to toss it right now to David Muir and Lindsey Day. Tonight, the high-stakes showdown here in Philadelphia between Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump. Their first face-to-face -face meeting in this presidential election, their first face-to-face -face meeting ever. A historic race for president upended just weeks ago. President Biden withdrawing after his last debate. Donald Trump now up against a new opponent. The candidates separated by the smallest of margins, essentially tied in the polls nationally and in the key battlegrounds, including right here in Pennsylvania, all still very much in play. The ABC News presidential debate starts right now. This is an ABC News special. The most consequential moment of this campaign, Kamala Harris. Together, we will chart a new way forward. 
Donald Trump. We will soon be a great nation again. Face to face, historic. The ABC News presidential debate. Here now, David Muir and Lindsey Davis. Good evening, I'm David Muir, and thank you for joining us for tonight's ABC News presidential debate. We want to welcome viewers watching on ABC and around the world tonight. Vice President Kamala Harris and President Donald Trump are just moments away from taking the stage in this unprecedented race for president. And I'm Lindsay Davis. Tonight's meeting could be the most consequential event of their campaigns with Election Day now less than two months away. For Vice President Kamala Harris, this is her first debate since President Biden withdrew from the race on July 21st. Of course, that decision followed his debate against President Donald Trump in June. Since then, this race has taken on an entirely new dynamic. And that brings us to the rules of tonight's debate 90 minutes with two commercial breaks no topics or questions have been shared with the campaigns the candidates will have two minutes to answer questions and this is the clock that's what they'll be seeing two minutes for rebuttals and one minute for follow-ups clarifications or responses their microphones will only be turned on when it's their turn to speak no pre-written notes allowed there is no audience here tonight in this hall at the national constitution center this is an intimate setting for two candidates who have never met